Ty Busy. Yo, what's up, guys? It's your boy Ty Busy. You know where I'm at. I'm in the studio, and I got another Ty Busy Tuesday. Yeah, that's what I got. <laughs> so anyway, man, I got a very, 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 very special guest, and it's the world famous, world renowned, world traveling. Out of this world, percussionist Paul Wood. Let's clap it up for Paul Woods. Here, yeah. we got my man Paul Woods, and he's gonna be bringing you some tips, showing you some stuff, giving you some advice that's gonna take your drumming to the next level, man. So, without further ado, I'm gonna let my man Paul do his thing. Uh, what's up, man? It's Paul Woods. And I'm just talking about the attack. And what do I mean by attack? How you actually approach the drum. Like, what are you doing when you're actually about to strike the drum? Slight demonstration from, keep in mind, just the drum line point of view. Of course, it can also help, you know, drum set, timbale, uh, you know, heel finger, whether you're playing the bongos. It depends how you're attacking the drum, what's your approach? So, I, and I always like to express my, uh, how I feel about percussion. Got a little bit of knowledge. I'm born and raised in Ohio, so always knew how to play drums, but was never taught per se. And what I mean by never taught, it was just something I knew how to do. And I had, you know, music teachers along the way kind of fine tune it, but it's been a gift. So taking that gift and actually putting it with, okay, I hear the beats and I see it rolled on the paper. I'm trying to match it together, but why? Mathematically, you know, partial wise, Ow. how does it make sense? So you put it together, then all of a sudden you're like, wow, I learned how to read music. <laughs> College at Kentucky State. Also spent a year at Jackson State University. I do a lot of mentoring as far as when it comes to drumline. I've done a drumline live tour about three years, I think, something like that. Uh, drumline 2 movie. Done a, a, a lot of host of clinics, and my thing is cleanliness. Cleanliness, how you attack the drum. So listen, how you attack the drum is so simple. First of all, uh, when it comes to your state, it's weird how every state has a standard. You're speaking from a drumline point of view. Um, I was a part of a historical black drumline college. So a lot of them, everyone has different styles, different methods. How how you simply attack the drum is, is, going, is, is, is going to mean the most. So... What's your method? You know, are you just at V shape? Are you at 45? <laughs> I've seen people do a 90. I've seen people do like one. It's, it's so many methods. So that's what you get together with your line. And how you striking the drum. I love single tap warm ups. That simple warm-up can be attacked so many ways. How you're attacking it the first, first of all, and I think this is anybody, I don't care if you swag me at drum corps. When you're doing something with the right hand, understand that there's a placement where the left hand is supposed to be. So you sitting up here just doing simple eights and you switch. Notice the whole time I'm playing this right, pay attention to my left hand, because this is what I see a lot through a lot of places. You know, placement. Where is that stick on that last beat? Is it staying down or is it... Or is it buzzing? Clarify. You always want clarity. Clarity is the best thing that you can give. And the thing that I love about uh, rudiments is, and music in general, a perididdle that is over in Ohio is the same perididdle as in Japan. It's the same perididdle in Germany. It's music. It's universal. One and two and eighth note. Everything is very simplistic, but if you notice, it's the same thing over there. That's how you communicate. All right? So placement is very important, no matter what you're playing. Always pay attention to the hand you're not tapping with. That's what I always say. How you attack the drum? 
it has everything to do with, understand when some people attack the drum, it's music. Understand when some people attack the drum and it's not snare drum, it's drumming in general. I'm just using this because it's a pad snare bass, you know. When you attack the drum, very simple pattern. That simple pattern right there, it really depends on how you attack the drum. Some people, they choke back, they grip over, thumb is up. Some people you see with almost in the middle of the stick kind of got that, you know, open grip. My thing is, I don't care how you hold the drum, as long as it makes sense and all eight of you look together or all 14 of you look together. That's what's important. People forget that. Ugh, they ugly, but they ugly together, so that means they clean, and that's, you know, and then where's the sound? So, that's one way you can, you can attack it. Now you can try to choke back on the sticks a little bit. Now you can kind of do uh, what you want flashing wise so and a lot of people see this with show style drumming that same lick that i was just playing could easily look different if you put a little moving motion in it you know what i mean look at my son here in the way so you had that same motion when you're playing this now not only are you just playing rudiments but you're actually like just like basketball listen I know a million people that can shoot. I know a million people that can shoot that's not in the NBA. I know a million people that can shoot that's, you know, good, like, drummers. They can shoot. But what else? How are you going to get open? What type of moves do you have to get open? What type of crossover? What type of, you know, take it to the hole, let me draw all the... All of the defense on me, but I'm going to pass it off. What else do you have besides that? That's where sometimes, in some cases, that's where sticking comes in. So, that simple pattern. Now, you almost it's almost like not thinking about it literally. You're like hitting the drum, but you're keeping the weight there on the stick and you're bringing it up. Then you come up. It's like while you're doing that. It's, that's a flash. If you sitting here playing like this, something simple like that, that's a flash. If everybody do that, that's a flash. It can look so perfected if you do it right. So you take that simple how I was playing it, now you put some arm motion in there. But notice, in the inner beats is still there. And that's what a lot of people miss about show style drumming. You'll hear this, So you'll hear, but there's some inner beats. So going back to that lick I was playing. Sometimes you'll come slightly in, and again, it just depends on what you want to do with it. Now you're taking it a little different. Now you're actually like, listen, everybody in the crowd don't understand what a perididdle is. Everybody don't understand what a rough is. Everybody don't know what partials and one ianas is and crescendos. They don't know. So let me cater to them. Now you're switching it up. And it's simple. But the thing is, you don't want to lose that, that volume of that note when you get there. It's simple. You don't want to lose that value. And you make sure you get that whole wrist rotation. Now you're adding into it. Now notice we're still on this. And I know many of y'all watching that. Y'all been playing something like that since seventh grade. But understand it, it, it takes it, it takes levels. Now you're doing something else. Now you're changing it up a little bit, but still, you still got some different things in there. Now, let's try to let's try to keep it going. Let's try to see what we got on there. Now 
Now you got the bass and now you're adding into it, the bass, basic part. It's all about what you're listening to. Let's try something else. So let's just go match grip and switch it up. And, and you're listening to that simple single stroke four. How are you playing it? Are you putting the accent on the beginning? Is it on the second beat? You know, where is it at? Is it on the last beat? What is it? It's singles. If you can say it, you can play it. The only difference between certain drum lines, the way they attack the drum, some drum lines is playing single stroke fours, especially through the tunnels and the tenors, and you'll never even know because it's just. But it's so pure. How are you attacking it? Is, you know, is it. Is it. Your, your, your whole key mode is that last note. Here. Now you. Now you put notes in there. So what else? Now you blend it all out even. And then notice the stick height. You don't want to be. Or. Listen to it. If you're not in the mirror, you're not perfecting yourself. So it's all about attack. How are you attacking the drum? When you're doing your stick tricks, what are you attacking? What, what, you know, what are you paying attention to? Is it something to where you're paying attention and you're doing this? What's your point? My left leg right now is all the way out front. My right leg is like back. And I'm just, you know, I'm just right here. Also understand this. Your placement means everything within your specific line. And when I mean your specific line, you have to understand that when you are playing your solos, when you're playing your individualized things, that is awesome. But when you're in a line, you got seven, six people standing next to you. So now you have to listen. Also, another very important thing is how you set your line up. And how you set certain people, what are you listening to? Snares, nine times out of ten, you're going to listen in. Which means that best player, that solid player, he's going to be in the middle. A lot of drum lines, notice you put them on the end. And that's cool because they're the section lead. You can see them. It's a thing. But musicality. Sometimes our showmanship overthrows our musicality. Because it's my part. And I'm going to kill it. And this is what I really want to do. And that's what happens, and all the musicality goes out the window. And sometimes when it's for the crowd, it's supposed to. The crowd is into it. You're, you're supposed to throw the musicality out the window, because remember, they don't know nothing about music. But all they know is, oh, I hear a nice beat. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I can groove to that, bro. They are chopping, and they moved. Oh, I seen a stick trick. I've never seen that. I didn't know you can do that with tricks uh, or sticks. I didn't know. I didn't know you can do that with drumsticks. I had no idea. And they did something else. Then they look at this other line, and they're like, I feel like that was good, but they did that too, and they moved. Okay, oh, that's nice. When you look back at them, now it's a whole different type of entertainment. Now they're just putting you in a different mindset. Now they're using gimmicks. Now they got costumes. and People want stuff that's not natural. It's natural for a drum line to come out upset and It's natural. But then what? If people don't understand that about drum line. Think about it. Listen to the attack. Listen to how your bass drums is attacking. If you have tenor drums and you have tunnels and six tuplets or quads, you really got to listen to how you make your cadences. You really got to listen to your blending because it's already a lot going on right there. So you want to give everybody that tastefulness. Okay, I hear you on this part. But you're not supposed to be hurt. You're supposed to just be. Matter of fact, let me just see you. Let me see the flashes going. People don't know how to blend a section out. This is my knowledge one-on-one. -on -one.